Gabri Vega to Napoli looked all done, but he's moving to Al Ahly in the Saudi Pro League. Rob, uh, you've seen a lot of him. It's fair to say to me, at least, what strikes me about this, he's the first kind of up-and-coming superstar to choose Saudi. The others that we've had have generally been, you know, people at the end of their career or established pros, Ruben Neves, Milinkovic, Savic, Firmino, people like that, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of different. Go back to questions. He's the player I think Liverpool should have signed. So a lot of him last year, big lad, physical. Um, he's, I think he scored a dozen goals from midfield for Celta de Vigo, who are bottom third of the Spanish table. He's a potential Spain international. He was linked with Real Madrid. Napoli seemed the perfect kind of move. Napoli and, and Dortmund in Germany signed these players and then they go to the next level. I thought he goes somewhere like that. Not to Saudi Arabia. Maybe players make the money at the end of the career. He seems to be have an agent that, that yeah. wants him to make his money at the beginning it, of his career. So this is the biggest surprise of the week. Al Ahly, by the way, seemed a bit different from the other Saudi super clubs in the sense they have an up and coming manager as well. And, and Matthias Jaisler, of course, uh, uh, previously uh, at, at Salzburg. They seem to be going for these younger players with an upside. A different approach. Let's just yeah, put well, it that They way. say they're going to be the best league in, in four years' time. And with this guy, he mm -hmm. could be one of the best midfield players in the world in four years' time. Paris Saint-Germain have stepped up their pursuit of Eintracht's Randall Koller Mouwani gap. What are the implications here? So I find this really interesting. Jules touched upon it as well. I, I don't know if they're doing it because, oh, look, he's French. He's young. Let's go for him. Guys, you just spent a ton of money on a center forward, on a young center forward. His name is Gonzalo Ramos. Mm -hmm. Now, can Colomani play wide? Uh, sure, he can play wide, but you just signed uh, Usman Dembele, and Kylian Mbappe supposedly is sticking around as well. So, wait, four into three don't really go, even in Luis Enrique's wonder team machinations. I'm just wondering, if you are going to commit enormous funds to Colomani, is the possibility of Mbappe moving on still on? Back at despite plan. What Real Madrid Would you just give him a year to learn the trade when he inevitably goes to Real Madrid? Yeah, but, but you, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I hear what you say. I hear what you I, say how yeah. much possible money can you commit to a fourth? Four this is three Paris Saint-Germain. They don't care. Well, seems the Chelsea way. of France. <laughs> Um, and also, if he comes, of course, it means Akitike is going to move on, possibly to Milan. Uh, let's go there, Rob. It looks like Lucas Paqueta is in a whole lot of trouble. It's not just a booking from last season. He's being investigated by the FA for three other bookings, including one on opening day. There's also a parliamentary inquiry uh, back in Brazil. He and Luis Enrique from Betis, of course, together with uh, um, seven other players, have been summoned to testify uh in front of this this parliamentary committee and they can say no but if they say no it's voluntary they can then be subpoenaed this is growing it is and again we have to be careful you know there are kind of legal landmines everywhere we go in this show at the moment aren't they uh <laughs> paqueta and uh enrique is uh, the way he likes to be to say his name we're, we're, we're both booked on the same day and, uh, and and I didn't know he was booked on the opening day as well but let's face it in the current circumstances in, in the English Premier League you're very lucky if you don't get booked because you get booked for just kind of winking in the wrong direction <laughs> at the referee so maybe the opening day isn't a surprise and I know Enrique did the Real Betis game last week he was left out of the squad last year he was a constant in the team for Real Betis he's not played this season this talk and this is the ultimate punishment of him being sent I think to Ruben Kazan uh, they've been linked with him so it looks like Betis have washed their hands they don't want anything to to do with it and Paqueta clearly he's lost a chance of going to Manchester City Ruben Kazan are they unaware that Russian clubs are under sanction not down in Seville <laughs> hello hola Beticos <laughs> wakey wakey that's what the Spanish media are saying uh, Milan opened their season with a 2-0 win over Bologna and Kristen Pulisic scored a sensational goal uh, Gabby seems to be coming together for him as he found his place couldn't have asked for a better start there were suggestions he might play in the number 10 role instead he, he played wide on the right he looked lively he looked super motivated uh, look I think even people who don't like Pulisic will tell you that he works extremely hard he's almost a little bit nerdy with the seriousness in which he takes his football he's a great professional uh, and he's adapted he's not going to get he's not going to get to play on the left much unless Lau plays through the middle which seemingly won't happen but you know seems to have that understanding with Giroud uh, it's a really good start for Mina they did drop off in the second half a little bit but you know by that point they were 2-0 up they don't care Alexis McAllister had his red card from the weekend overturned. Seem reasonable to you, Rob? Absolutely. Real time. And I watch a lot of games from kind of touchline level where the referees sit and the assistants sit. 
real speed, probably looked like a bad tackle. Probably the referee's not going to be overturned by VAR. That's the directive this year. Has to be clear and obviously wrong by the referee. Real time, it looked like a bad foul. When you watch it and they've sat down and gone, yeah, red card's too much of a punishment. So, I, yes, they have got it right. I, I agree with you. This directive that, like, you don't want VAR to step in unless it's really clear and obvious because then, oh, look, we'll overturn it later in the week. In the meantime, the damage right then and there in the game is done Absolutely, because McAllister's yeah. off the pitch. Yeah. So for me, I don't know. I, I don't like this directive of like, oh, no, don't re-referee or whatever. If you think it's wrong, it's wrong. I mean, I think it was a gray area. I don't think it was a great tackle. It was off the ground and it was on that kind of that borderline. In real time, it did look like a red card to me. But yeah, in this is a gray area, then don't yeah. overturn it. I don't know. Just me. Just me. <laughs> Uh, Gab, you've got a piece on Romelu Lukaku out on the website. He's been linked to loan, well, loan moves everywhere, but Spurs, Roma. Is that more likely than Chelsea biting the bullet and inviting him to come back and join the squad? Or, or is maybe Saudi a viable option? So he's had the Saudi deal on the table, table for a long time. One thing I want to underscore about the Saudi deal is, first of all, he's turned it down time and again, but it's still there. People think that every Saudi club is just flush with cash. That's not true. There's four that were public. The public investment fund uh, have taken an active stake, um, and the four center uh, the, the four center forwards at those clubs. Let me tell you, who they are: they're Roberto Firmino, Alexander Mitrovic, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Karim Benzema. Okay, so if you're Lukaku, it's not like these guys are desperate to get you because they have cover uh, at, at center forward. Um, the Spurs thing keeps coming on and off. I, I don't. I think that would be the ultimate troll heel move. I don't see that happening. Roma, it's been suggested because the Mourinho thing, I don't think Roma have uh, have the funds to do it necessarily unless Chelsea just... But are you going to have to pay his full wage? Uh, Chelsea would have to contribute, I think, a ton of time for, for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, maybe the door will reopen. Let's see. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.